In this week's gospel, we've got a story of life and death. Two weeks from today, we'll commemorate, recall, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Seems heavy. Seems like a lot of death. Lazarus' death, Jesus' death, but there's promise. There's resurrection, both in Lazarus' story and in Jesus' story. And that, my friends, is powerful. Particularly for those of us who are here today living the human condition ourselves, facing death ourselves, the death of loved ones, or perhaps our own mortality. Two weeks ago, my nephew Christian and his wife Rose, who live as missionaries in Guatemala, welcomed their second child to the world, Amadeo. <laughs> A beautiful baby boy. His older brother, Romeo, came two years ago. And so, Rose and Christian were celebrating Amadeo's arrival and Rose's parents, Boris and Beth Ramirez, had arrived in Guatemala to help care for young Amadeo in his first month of life. Everyone was celebrating. It was a joyous time. About five days later, Rose succumbed to a pulmonary thrombosis and at 27 years of age, Rose lost her life. The highs of new birth gave way to the tragic death of a beautiful young soul. Now, about a week ago, in the wake of Rose's death, Christian and her parents, Beth and Boris, and my brother and his wife, and my sister-in-law and her husband, all gathered with the village where Christian and Rose lived to celebrate Rose's life and to commit her to our Lord. Rose was buried in a simple grave, a simple wooden box. It's the way she wanted it. In Guatemala, it's called a yul, J-U-L. It's the way that Rose saw herself living or being committed to eternity. Now, there are Christian friends of mine, and particularly some non-Christian friends of mine, who have been asking me over the last week or so, where is God in all this? Where is Jesus in the midst of this kind of tragedy, right on the heels of the joy and celebration of young Amadeo's birth. You know, friends, death is tragic. It's hard to take. Rose's death came unexpectedly and caught us all completely off guard. But you know, in this weekend's gospel lesson, when Jesus loses his friend Lazarus, and he's faced with the reality of Martha and Mary, Lazarus' sisters, and their grief, Jesus weeps. <laughs> Even our Lord, in his humanness in that moment, grieves, weeps. It's a normal human thing to do. 
we question, we doubt, we don't understand, we, we can't get our minds around it. But where's Jesus? Friends, Jesus was there for Christian and Amadeo and Romeo in the presence of Boris and Beth Ramirez. They arrived in time to be there for Christian and Christian for them when they lost, when they lost their one and only daughter. Friends, Jesus was there when a neighbor, a friend from the village, went to Christian and said, I know it's Rose's wish to be buried right here in the village, and I'd like to gift you with a cemetery plot, a yule. And so Rose was buried similar to our Lord in a borrowed plot. Where was Jesus? Jesus was present in the way that the village turned out in support of Christian and Amadeo and Romeo and all of our family who had gathered to remember Rose's life. Jesus is present. Even when we can't get our human minds around the tragedy of death, even when we don't quite understand or we're just overcome with grief, Jesus is present with us. Sure, Jesus weeps with us too. Jesus feels the heartache. God feels the heartache of death that we, as God's beloved children, feel. But the promise and the gift of Jesus' presence through the gift of the Holy Spirit, through the gift of the resurrection, goes on. Even to this day, that's the promise that God gives us, that Jesus gives us, and Jesus shows up and comforts us, even in the midst of our grief. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.